Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the FarmCast. I'm Troy Randall with our Precision Ag team, joined today here with a new face, Preston Juniman, also on our Precision Ag team. Uh, glad to have you here, Preston. Glad to be here. So today we're talking about receivers, and one of our newest, greatest features we have would be SFRTK on our new 7,000 receiver. So this is something we've had out for probably a good year now, maybe a little more or more than a year, uh, but we've pretty much had a full season with SFRTK, got to know the ins and outs of it, uh, got to get it out there into customers' hands, uh, experience it firsthand. So um, I guess, Preston, you and me have kind of been uh, probably one of the bigger adopters of it and helping get con customers converted from radio uh, to SFRTK or even SFRTK to begin with. But in your words, kind of what is SFRTK and what can it provide us or customers in their operation yeah so in the past we've had radio rtk where we have our base stations and those receivers all have to have their own uh, antennas and have to be within range deer only said within 10 miles of that base you know sometimes we only saw more but we were limited to the bases um, to get that repeatability and get that good high accuracy high precision signal so now with sfrtk we're pulling in two more uh, satellite constellations which allow us to triangulate a little bit better and get that repeatability without the radios, without any antennas uh, in that sense. So we still get the long-term repeatability. Um, you know, SFRTK has been around for six plus years now. Yep, yep. Um, and every year Deer just keeps upping that repeatability chart and saying, yep, it's, as far as we know, it's not going to move. And actually now they've got the conversion datums where they can, they can actually just move that line back if it does it's you know if something were to shift and something goes haywire you know we've we've got the back end data to support it it's here it's pretty cool and we're seeing guys move to it just because of the simple fact that base stations are getting a lot more aged at this point they're taking a lot more maintenance time effort and you still you're still stuck to that distance from the tower. So when it comes to the hardware Preston I guess to utilize SFRTK we have to have pretty much the latest receivers uh 7,000 or the new 7,500, which I guess, explain that real quick. What is the difference between a 7,000 and a 7,500? Is there any difference? No, not really. I mean, you've got an internal motherboard change, uh, and that's that's a warrant at the 7,500. That's why they didn't go full 8,000. Basically, the same exact components other than the motherboard. They went from a two-piece design down to a one-piece. Activations, licenses, everything's the same. So from a customer standpoint, there's no difference between a 7,000. Yeah, so we'll use that term. The premise is called, we'll probably call them 7,000s because they're, they're identical. But moving forward, we're going to see 7,500 universals and 75 integrated. It's pretty much back in throughs of things like combines, sprayers, uh, pretty much all our, all our new tractors now, all your 25 tractors, sprayers, the new S7 combines have that built-in 7,500 back in that receiver. So, you know, tomatoes to models when it comes to 7,000s. So. Yeah, and, and Deer basically just ran into a semiconductor shortage issue with their suppliers. So they just had to kind of redesign that board and... And they, when they did that, yeah, there's some differences in software, yep. but it's to communicate with that new circuit board. Yep. yep. So, but when it comes down to it, we can utilize that same great SFRTK on pretty much all 7,000, whether it be 7,000 or 7,500. So, so when it comes to the licensing part of the SFRTK, what's that look like? That's got to be probably the best part of these new receivers is, you know, when we come from radio RTK, you've got to have your SF2 ready or SF3 ready, depending on your generation receiver and your RTK ready activations. Yep. So right there's $7,500, uh, generally speaking. And then you got a radio on top of that, plus your subscription to use it on the tower. So for an entry level customer, you're looking at, you know, close to $13,000 by the time you get all the hardware and the licensing to run that receiver versus now we can pull one of these off the shelf put a license on it and you're out the door for you know, less than six. Yep. So uh, that's got to be probably the best part about it. And then if something were to ever happen, these licenses can be transferred from, you know, one receiver to the next receiver, integrated, not whatever. This pretty much takes all the guesswork out of it. We're pretty much getting, you know, sub inch accuracy with very little investment and pretty much out the door performance where you can just go stick on the machine, get a license and you have uh, SFRDK. And the best part is too, is there no more base stations? So that's always been for some larger growers. If you have fields that are spread out, you know, if you just run a one base station, it's not too bad. But if you have mounts in between, you know, two, three, four multiple base stations, that's always been big uh, hang up for some of my customers is, you know, making sure they're on the right base station, you know, things like that when they move between the fields. Because when you do move base stations, that can shift things around a little bit uh, in your operation too uh, when you use those different base stations. But the nice thing with the, the SFRTK, you pretty much just have it. You can go wherever you want to. We pretty much have it all throughout the United States. Um, 
and it can pretty much operate within our entire area without to, without having to worry about switching base stations. So speaking of shifting, <laughs> you see any shifts this spring? Yeah, it's been kind of a, a, a eventful uh, solar year, I would say so far. So a week ago we had another solar event. So <laughs> how, how'd that go for some of your guys? Well, not good. <laughs> It's actually uh, becoming the talking point of a lot of producers in our areas. They're they're asking what they can do to combat it because yep. it's something we haven't seen. I, I had never seen it till this year, yep. and if it's going to be something that's becoming the new norm, you know, we want to be we want to be on the front side of it. Not it seems like it always likes to do it right in the middle with busy season. So it did it right in the middle planting, and then it did it right in the middle of harvest too. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If that trend continues, though, it's going to be more more of a problem. But it was just like what happened this spring too. Uh, solar flares started kind of messing with radio RTK and just interfering with that base station. Pretty much the GPS signals the base station are receiving and sending back out. You know, you get that interference from, you know, solar waves, things like that. And it just messes with, we have guys that are, the lines are moving around, guys that were driving backwards, guys were driving sideways, guys were driving upside down, like I like to say, but. <laughs> right was <laughs> right left and yeah. left was right. Yeah, pretty much. So hey, luckily, I think overall, everyone was, it wasn't quite the, yeah, it wasn't quite the shock it was in the spring, but of course, corner harvest a little more, uh, have a little more wiggle room. You know, we still have that steering wheel in the combine, so uh, we still can drive it. Uh, the sky is not falling quite yet, so we can still do that too. But, uh, but we did definitely had some questions on it, and then, but guys were, we definitely it wasn't quite the surprise it was the spring. But when it comes down to that, you know, the big thing that affects is all radio, uh, radio RTK. How did it work for guys running on things like SFRTK and SF3? SFRTK uses that those four satellite constellations, right? So, uh, yeah, we might lose GPS signal, but we've still got three other signals uh, to back us up. Yep. And as that that solar flare kind of moves around, if that's what you would call it, I guess, uh, different times of the day, uh, we're able to stay running and, yep. and keep our repeatability. When you start talking about SF3 and SF2, they don't have those backup constellations like we do on the new receivers. So they still saw the downtime that we saw with the radio RTK. It might be a little more robust than a radio RTK, but of course you're not having, you're not getting that sub inch accuracy like we are with SF RTK, things like that too. So, and even when it happened a couple of weeks ago or here recently too, we were actually doing, uh, we were picking the corn at our training farm here at Holyoke too. And we were actually operating, you know, of course we use, utilize SF RTK on that field too. And we pretty much luckily saw no issue whatsoever. So, and pretty much all our customers ran SF RTK luckily saw no issues uh, during that time span too versus guys running radio RTK. So, so kind of a, kind of a plug for SF RTK. If it's you know, something that might, might benefit you and you don't, don't want to be affected by solar flares coming in the future, it might be a worthwhile upgrade. So, yeah, I think the only thing you lose going SF RTK versus radio RTK is that, that pull in time, right? So with radio RTK, we get a pull in time of what, a minute? Yeah, it was if even that. So. And SF RTK, we're, we're back up to 10 or 20 minutes. I can't remember exactly what that metric is, but that's minimal, especially if you're gonna get the machine out, you're gonna get it ready ahead of time. Yep, yep. You're, you've got it outside for plenty of time for it to kind of figure out where it's at. So, so kind of back to the life season part. So we have both universals and integrated receivers too. So when it comes to our integrated receivers, uh, when it comes to SF RTK, what's some of the benefits we can utilize with those new machines with those G5s and those advanced licenses? Yeah, so we're gonna start seeing some bundling happen, right? So the, the advanced license, we already see a pretty reduced cost on those. When we start adding in that SF RTK factor of that, um, Deer can actually start bundling it even more so. So there's no benefit to having multiple SF RTK uh, licenses right now, but maybe hopefully down the future, fingers crossed. <laughs> may, maybe maybe later on. Um, but yeah, as of right now, it's it's on a per machine basis. Um, they've been throwing around some numbers that are they're they're going to be very reasonable, I yeah. think. Yeah, and we can't kind of we can't bundle that for either like a one year or three years. So you can give one year of advance plus one year of SF RTK, or all the way up to three years of it both. Um, bundle that machine just to make yeah you know, make things easier make sure you have a, a nice nice license time of uh of both and not to worry about renewing it renewing it every year or so yeah, and the sfrdk license the cost of it's already really really close very to competitive, very competitive and compared to what our rtk radio base yeah unless you own your own base station which you you're going to have some costs there as yeah. well with maintenance and that right but yeah, very competitive on pricing there. And the biggest thing I always get quite asked too is, you know, especially back on the solar interference too, and radio RTK has been around for probably 20 some years. And so it's still kind of the same. It's been the same idea since its inception. We have that, you know, localized base station. It goes through either, you know, 900, 900 megahertz radio, 450, depending where you're at. 
to this rover. So the idea of it's pretty dated and just like everything else technology-wise, we've had a lot of advancements here definitely in the past 20 years, I would have to say. So there's been a lot of uh, features put into this about new technology and that's where you can get nailed that sub inch SFRTK accuracy with these receivers. So if a customer is interested in switching to SFRTK and say they have radio-based RTK, what does that process look like or how can we help that customer out switch from radio RTK to SFRTK? Luckily earlier this year, Deer gave us a tool uh, only to the dealers, uh, probably for good reason on that standpoint, just because it's there's a lot of different steps and you want to make sure you do it right the first time. But basically what we're looking at is we can take one of these universal 7,000 receivers, we can put a radio on it, we can go drive out to a base station uh, that you're cur currently utilizing, and we're going to collect what we call uh, conversion datum offsets. Basically what that's going to give us is a file that we can take to op center. Uh, we can go into land and select the fields that we want to convert, uh, typically within the radius of that tower that, that they're using. Um, we, we can then use that uh, datum offset to basically convert everything from what the radio RTK is showing to the SFRTK signal. So uh, we've done a couple of these for some different customers. So far, what I've seen is they're right on the money. Yeah. Biggest thing is you just have to be really careful with how you collect those conversions. When you're collecting those conversion files, um, typically there, you got two different options, right? So you can either completely archive all your radio lines yep. um, and just run the SF lines. And basically it just puts an underscore SF next to the name so you can decipher between the two. Or if you're stuck in between, which I don't recommend doing it this way, <laughs> uh, you can run both in there and then just archive all your radio data when you're done. Yep, yep, and that's definitely, like I said, Preston said that's a dealer tool, so just work with us, we'll definitely help you do that because it is kind of a, a tedious process on the front side. We have to go out there, like he said, pretty much hook up you know, a receiver like this on a tripod. Even Preston has a fancy tripod he's got from way back in the day when Deer came out with radio RTK, so, uh, but we use that, we collect that offset. But the nice thing is once we have it for each base station, and we do have to do it for each base station, so if you are running multiple base stations, that's where we can convert you know, this set of fields, boundaries, guidance lines for that base station and, and and so on and so on. But once we do have that datum offset, we can save that. We pretty much have it for that base station. We can use it however, whenever we need to. But this going out there, getting that offset has been kind of a progress uh, project we've been working on here this fall and probably will into the future too as we have more convert, customers convert from radio to SFRTK. We also do have some guys running cell too. So I did do did, did some asking around. We can't actually use this same datum uh, collection process on you know 450 of course and also third-party cell based rtk too so if that's something you use, utilize right now we can convert that you know cell whether it be yeah deer or third party we can convert that in the same manner from that cell rtk to sfrtk in the same same fashion it's a very very simple process i did it for a customer of mine uh, just kind of up the road and it seriously took once i had the once i had the offset when the offsetter about two, three minutes, I had everything converted for them and the old stuff archived, the new stuff in there. So it was very, very simple from that standpoint. So yeah, the, the longest time it takes is basically collecting the data, right? It's not converting it. That that process is really simple, but it completely eliminates the uh, the kickback of, well, I don't want to change signals because <laughs> I have to redo everything. No, you're going to be able to keep everything you got. And I can say this with, you know, 100% confidence, you're going to be you're going to be right where you need to be when you convert it if you do it right. You've had yourself quite a few customers move from radio to SFRTK. Yep, it's worked out perfect. So good, good to hear. Plus, on top of that, we get all the benefits of SFRTK, new receivers themselves. So um, and I, I think one thing, one other benefit, we really start to see if guys are running machine sync. Uh, in the past, we've kind of ran into issues with guys running radio RTK and machine sync, especially if they're running controlled traffic, which I know you have a lot of your customers set up on that too. But we ran into issues when, you know, the current would come up, share and link with the combine then then, then pull away and kind of lose that link and it would take out all the track but the nice thing with sfrtk you can pretty much you know control traffic from one end of the field and you can you know be on your ab line get up to the next of the combine you can sync with it and then pull away and then have all the track enabled the whole time and not have that issue with it going between shared signal uh, shared signal things like that which we've been kind of unfortunately fighting fighting with radio rtk uh for uh, since machine sync came out so yeah it kicks back to was and yeah. you gotta wait <laughs> 20 seconds second, it comes back and then yeah it's that's more of a more of a nuisance thing it's but it's 
not not that big of a deal, but it's uh, you pretty much have to re-engage all the track, wait for it to come back. So yeah, it's definitely if you're using controlled traffic, yeah, it's much nicer with uh, SFRGK. So you didn't even talk about the serviceable parts too. So yeah, that's one nice thing with these new receivers is they are much more serviceable. So unfortunately, around here we have to have like things like hail. Um, so uh, plastic components do like to get busted out. So we do have you know a handful. We can pretty much replace all these components, especially this top piece right here as well too. But the nice thing is. Uh, unlike our old 3000s, you know, this is actually a cover and the actual radio, the antenna is actually built in there too. So there's kind of a dual layer design in there as well. So it's a lot more, a lot more robust and hopefully it will last us uh, throughout years to come uh, down the road. So that, it was a great uh, conversation, Preston, about SFRTK. So if you are interested in SFRTK, if you currently have Radio RTK right now and want to convert, of course, get with us. Uh, either me or Preston, anyone on our Precision Ag team or anyone at 21st Century, we'd love to help get you converted over to the latest and greatest because it definitely is worth it. And we've, like I said, we've had a lot of experience with it this this year, especially. It's a very awesome new uh, technology uh, we have at our disposal right now. So uh, thanks again, Preston, for joining us. Uh, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Farmcast. Subject accuracy. Uh, uh. <laughs> you just get hit by that bird. Yeah, bow. <laughs> <laughs> Down. <laughs> <laughs> I did that up, Titus. Go.